So I'm going to be talking about logging, obviously. Um, so, but first, a couple of apologies. Um, the first apology is to the guy with the camera. I'm going to be moving around a lot. Um, and the second apology is to you guys, because I was expecting to be, ooh, I was expecting to be doing this talk, preparing the talk, over the last bank holiday weekend, you know, finishing it up. I ended up going sailing instead on the Norfolk Broads. So I spent the whole time in a boat in the rain, which you'll hear about in a second. So I'm going to switch the first slide so that the camera can sync up. And this is kind of an interactive first session. Put your hands up if you talk about logging in your code style guides at work. OK, inverse, put your hand up if you do. Sorry, if you don't. If you don't, OK, fine. Yeah. So people don't tend to talk about logging very much, which is weird, considering it's like one of the oldest things that we do in software, back when we logged to pieces of paper, before I was born, probably. So we don't talk about logging in our style guides. Has anybody ever been taught logging best practices? OK, put your hand up if you have not been taught logging best practices. No? Put your hand up if you've ever thought about logging best practices. OK, cool. This is awesome. A few people. Has anybody ever tested their logs? Put your hand up. Tested your logs? Nice. Tested JavaScript logs? <laughs> OK. So my name's Joseph Reeve. I am at jreeve0 on Twitter, at Joe on the Slack group for this. Um, for this kind of community. Um, if you want my details, you can go to joe.contactme.io, and the slides, should you want to find them, are at that link. Uh, take a picture now if you want. This slide will also be at the end. So logbooks. This is kind of coming into the sailing thing. Logbooks are really, really cool, because we've been doing this for ages. right? People on boats have been sitting down every hour when they're out at sea, they say, this is our heading when I'm writing this log. This is what the wind is like. Um, you know, standard stuff about boats. And that kind of gets locked in a box, which hopefully, should the ship sink, somebody else can come along and find it, the floating box that's kind of somewhere on the sea. They know what the ship is. They know where they were when it all, all went wrong. They know what the conditions were. And potentially, you know, they can actually diagnose the exact reason this ship sunk in the middle of the night somewhere. You know, and they also know what's on it, so is it worth going and looking for it and finding all the hidden treasure on it at the bottom of the sea? Um, but also, is it worth sending out a rescue party? Was it just one person and you know, this logbook is being found 20 years later? So when I went sailing, the guys at the boatyard where I rented the boat, they know me. I've been there for a while. Um, they said, since you've had, last had this boat, these are the things we've changed. The bilge washers. So the bilge is the, the bit of water kind of underneath the floor. So there's a little kind of, it's called the bilge, a little bit of air that water can go into. And if that gets too full, water starts coming up through the floor and you start to sink, basically. Um, but generally, boats are always slowly sinking and we have little pumps that take the water out of the boat. They also changed the countertops. Lovely, we've got these nice granite looking countertops now, which is brilliant. They changed the water heater, which is cool, because now we get hot water. Um, and they changed the engine. They also changed a bunch of batteries and stuff. So they said to me, seeing as we know you, and seeing as all this stuff's new, and you're the first hire of the year, which at the time I thought was great, now I know it's not. Um, seeing as you're the first hire of the year, the first one to use all of this cool new stuff, could you keep a log of the bilge pump? How long do you hold the bilge pump for? Um, so the whole holiday went really, really well. I got back on Monday evening, um, except the countertop fell off and broke four bottles of beer. The beer from the bottles then went into the bilge. The water heater used up all of our water when it shouldn't have and put all the excess water into the bilge. The engine died, which was fun, in the middle of nowhere. And then it rained nonstop. And does anyone know where the rain goes in a boat? Say it out loud. Into the bilge, exactly, into the bilge. So this was me in the rain with a cup of coffee. It's kind of OK. Um, so now let's talk about JavaScript logging, because that's why we're all here, right? Or that's why I'm here, at least. 
JavaScript logging is cool because it's kind of not done very much, but there's loads of kind of prior art. So us JavaScript developers and lots of developers have a really, really nasty habit. We tend to reinvent the wheel over and over again. Has anyone heard of web workers? All right, that's threading accidentally reinvented badly. Um, or worklets, which is reinventing the, um, the actor model, but without having the name so you can't Google what it is. Um, but kind of the time when I had the red pill, you know, I, you know Matrix style, I started to actually think about logging. It was when I was talking to a friend of mine, Julian, who's at the back on his phone. Um, um, so he's doing a lot of work in analytics and logging software, um, a lot of Android stuff and non-JavaScript stuff. But I, I went over and I, I had a chat with him, and we talked about logging for three, four hours. Um, and this is the first time I'd actually talked to someone about logging, because surely, like, console.log, it worked. You know, console.log, debug, hello. Um, so I, I talked to him about, about this, and it wasn't boring, which was the first thing that surprised me. Talking about logging wasn't boring. Um, and then I went to work the next morning and saw this log, this, this statement, this bit of code. And I was like, what? Git blame. Launch missiles. Kill them. You know, who, who on earth did this? Which, obviously, if any of you have ever done a git blame on a piece of code that looks rubbish, don't, because it's always you that wrote it. So I was looking at this code, and I was thinking, this is bad. This console.log statement is bad, and I have no idea why it's bad. Right? Just no idea. I, just, I know because I've had this long conversation, but I don't know why it's bad. Right? So I started looking for other things. Um, console.log error, error.message. Right? Why is that bad? Come to it. Console.error, fazom. That is, has anyone here ever worked with a Hungarian? Yeah, a Hungarian programmer? Yeah. Put that into Google Translate. The polite translation is, oh shit. And then console.log finished at date.now. Does anyone know what date.now outputs? A bunch of numbers, right? Not human readable. So I was like, these are all bad. All of these hundreds of log statements in this code base that I'm responsible for are bad. You know, I can't look at the, the logs and know what's going on, know if the system's even OK, let alone if the users are OK. And these are systems running you know, the, a couple of layers down. <laughs> people are trading half a million pounds on a day or are deciding whether or not to run trains. Like These are dangerous systems if things go wrong. Luckily, this isn't directly it, but this is kind of a couple of layers away. So I kind of thought about it for a while. And I thought there are four dimensions, four things that you can kind of focus on, you can think about specifically that make a log good or bad. So you've got context. What's going on in the app? What's the data? What's the time? What's, yeah, we'll come back. Uh, what's the purpose? Is it for debugging? And I'm going to, I think I'm going to delete it before I commit it. Is it for um, auditing? You know, we did have this many users log in, and the product owner knows it, and they went to these sites, and they did this and this and this. Is it important? Is someone about to die? Is someone about to lose half a million pounds? Or was there a garbage collection event? And the format, is it human readable? Is it greppable? You know, grep, Unix grep. Yeah. Can I just grep my logs and see every time this log user logged in? Or can I grep my logs and see um, every time there was an error, every time something went wrong? The purpose. So we might be doing analytics, which is a kind of logging, I promise you. You can ask me about it later. Um, the purpose, is it for debugging or is it for analytics, improving the user experience? Did someone die? Did someone just log in? Was there a garbage collection event? You know, is it scannable? Is it parsable? Which is really, really important. If you're using something like Logstash, has anyone heard of Logstash? It's a tool, you know, elastic search guys um, for dealing with logs. So that's context, purpose, importance, and format. They're all things that are important when we're writing logs. So none of this stuff is new. You can see examples of all this stuff in Log4j, which is a Java logging library, which is kind of industry standard for Java stuff. The syslog standard, which is kind of has bits of, bits of stuff. Just look it up on, online. Um, Count.ly, which there are some stickers around somewhere. 
they, I, I had a chat with the CEO and he sent me some stickers which say open source rocks, which is cool. Um, so they're over there somewhere. Um, and that's just a tool for you know, logging events, logging errors, logging different things to a, a remote location from the client or from other languages. Logstash and good old console dot, you know, we've got console dot log, error, warn, info, different kind of levels, importances. And then we've got things like timing and profiler, loads of really cool stuff. Just open dev tools, type console dot and look at the IntelliSense. Really cool stuff. So this is a, an example of a bad format of logs. Has anybody seen this in their log files? Raise your hands if you've seen something like this in your log files. Yeah? Someone's just logged out some array, and you've just got object, 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 object. Takes up hundreds of lines of logs, and yeah, you, don't, you, you kind of lose the context. So this, is, this breaks any context you've got. A good format is showing the user that logged in. Wrapping things in square brackets makes things really parsable. It's surprising. I mean, I'm going to say reg regular expressions, right? But if you need to do something quickly, regular expressions are really handy, or graphing for things using regular expressions. Um, logging errors, instead of doing console.log blah error.message, just log the actual error, not appended to a string. And it'll actually display the whole stack trace, which is lovely. And this is, this is an example of, of showing context. This is IP addresses. So we're showing context of where this stuff happened from, which is important when we come to this kind of thing. Right? User logged in, user logged in, user logged in. Error, got data. Pretty rubbish, because we don't know what's going on. This means a lot different, right? So we've got the same user logged in five times within one second. Either we've got a bug or we've got a bot, right? Both of these things are important. And if you've got your IP address, you can start looking at the IP address. Is it a real user? Is it some kind of bot scraper? We've had that a lot, stealing lots of valuable data. They pay for one user, and they've got their bots going off and downloading huge amounts of data. So it all depends on the goal. The logs that you actually use, the logging statements, the logging context, the data, I can't just come up here and say, log the IP addresses, or log the users, or whatever. You know, I can't say log this, log that, because it depends so much on your individual context, on your application, on your users, and on what you're expected to provide for your customers. So it depends on the goal. Has anyone read The Goal by Eli Goldratt? No one. OK, first thing you do when you get home, go on Amazon, order The Goal. It's about Kanban management or something, but it's really, really good at helping you understand where, in an organization, developers you know, developers fit and how they can help the wider organization. So there's this thing I made up this morning uh, called the logging type table. And basically, this is talking about the different types of logging, the different reasons you might use a log statement. So we've got some things. It's a bit small. Different, different types of logging. So there's, there's something called tracing. Has anyone heard the term tracing before? Yeah? OK. So tracing is often used for debugging. It's kind of logging you know, function invocations or individual variables and just for really when, when there's some bug that you're looking at. So the question it answers is, what happened? You know, how did we get here? What happened? What did the user do to get to this point? Or what data came in to get to this point? And we usually log the state changes and the function invocations, and it's targeted at developers. So there's anyone heard of event logging? Fairly common term, event logging. It's analytics. It's understanding what's going on inside the app. Is that a user doing specific things, or is it the application doing specific things? So what's happening? Um, actions and exceptions. And it's useful for administrators, um, product owners, and kind of us as developers. We know which bits of code to specifically improve. Progress logging, which is something that probably we don't think much about. Um, this can actually feed back to users of um, applications. Has anyone ever used uh, DD, the Unix tool DD? Raise your hands. No one's used DD. What? Has anyone ever moved an image file, not a .img, onto a, an SD card for like a Raspberry Pi or something? No. Wow. OK. So DD is an example of bad logging, because you press DD, and it starts copying this three gigabyte file onto an SD card, and it just, hmm? sorry? You meant the command. The command DD, yeah, the Unix utility, yeah. Um, so 
DD, you type DD, this big file, onto this SD card, which I haven't used in three years. Maybe it'll work. And it just sits there, staring at you, blank, right? No logging, no explanation of what's going on. It just kind of sits there. And then come back in half an hour, and hopefully it's worked, right? So that's, that's kind of induces a lot of anxiety in its users. So the question, oh, so progress logging is all about answering the question, are you OK? Are you still working? Have you crashed? Is there anything I can do to help, basically? So we kind of log percentage of progress, what errors have happened, what's going on, targeted at users, because this can bubble up to some application. If I click a button in on some website, and it starts churning away, chugging away, and it doesn't load in five seconds, I'm going to hit refresh. Right? But if some pop-up comes up and says, this is going to take a while, we're loading the page for you, we're aggregating the data, then you're more likely to kind of wait for it. Right? So then there's audit, which is kind of something that we really, really don't think, think about much, which is kind of verif verifying that the behavior of the application is correct. You know, did, when my bank sent money, do they log saying, we transferred this much money from this account to this account, and this account's you know, amount of money decreased by the same amount, and this account increased. Right? This is kind of double entry bookkeeping. It's what, what accountants do is they just look at the data from different angles, and they just make sure everything lines up. And this is something that your compliance departments might need, the government might want, like GDPR type stuff, and the rest of the business might want because they want to know how many users are, work, you know, are using the tool. Um, is the number of subscribers going down every month, which is obviously a bad thing. Um, yeah. So that's the, uh, the logging type table. So purple slides again. We're nearly at the end. Don't worry. I'm just going to wrap up the sailing stuff. So oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to do this instead. Um, so the logging golden rules, the three things to consider when you're writing logs. And then I'm going to wrap up the sailing stuff. Remember the reader. So this is who's reading the data. Is it going to be parsed? Are they going to be able to understand what's going on? Do they know the context? No personal data, no passwords. I've seen that a lot. No passwords, no usernames, no email addresses. Um, depends on the context, obviously. And then answer the question. Think about what question are you trying to answer with these logs? Are you trying to answer, how did we get here? Are you trying to answer, are you functioning correctly? Are you trying to answer, um, answer this, this random question that the marketing guy said, hey, I'd really love to know how many users log in every three seconds or every three days. Right? If there's some specific thing, that's, that's kind of the question. And you need to make sure that that's understandable in the logs itself. OK, sailing. Now we're on sailing. So this was my log that I kept in a book with paper and pen. I mean, hardcore stuff, right? So there are a few things that we can, we can kind of Keep no, take note of that we can actually learn. So this is event logging. This is me saying, I did this, and it happened for this long. So this is when I picked the boat up. Yeah, you can see the, the, well, the day I picked the boat up and the first time I ran the test. And it ran for kind of three seconds. And then you can see something went wrong, because suddenly my bilge pump, the thing that's supposed to stop me from sinking, takes 12 seconds to do its job. And then. Some engineer came in the middle of the day. You'll see by the rest of the logs that it's kind of a weird time. In the middle of the day, he came, and he fixed something and then ran it for 10 seconds. So this is an abnormal log. right? So something different happened. And then you can see something went wrong. It's not immediately obvious. But if you're kind of displaying this in a graph, it's quite helpful. That I actually missed the morning here. I missed the morning on the 2nd of the 4th. And that's because. Uh, we had more issues with our water heater. And suddenly, worrying about actually being able to drink water was more important than, uh, than measuring how long our bilge pump ran, ran for. So that's something else went wrong. And then that's when I, I ran that just before I dropped the boat off. So another interesting thing is, after the, um, the tests, uh, after the guy fixed it, these tests are all very similar, even though the amount of rain changes. right? So the actual test runs change. Um, so uh, don't change much, sorry. Which means there's probably a lot of overhead in, in the pump from spinning up. Right? But there's a lot of overhead, and you can tell because the values are similar, not because they're different. So similarities in logs is still really, really handy. OK, that's it. You can drink more beer, eat more pizza. Cool. <laughs>